Well, hello, YouTubers, and welcome back to the Holtz Mitchell channel. And uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, welcome all the new subscribers and those interested in uh, woodworking machinery, woodworking, and machine work. Today we're going to be looking at a groove bed uh, Weinig molder. Um, I started restoring this machine here a few weeks back. Um, most of it was just pretty much straightforward. It's themes you've, you've already seen before. Um, just basic grinding, basic uh, motor rebuilding, uh, stuff like that. But uh, in this video you're going to get to see uh, the, the uh, bed in here get ground, uh, the finished bed, after the uh, the uh, stock leaves the grooved bed and goes on to a finished bed and uh, that had to be restored. There were some other issues with the machine that had to be dealt with. Um, Again, just basic machine stuff, nothing you know really getting worth getting excited over, but uh, anyway, th this machine is interesting in the fact that it's a grooved bed, so I'll give you a tour of it here just in a short bit and uh, show you some of the other things. Of course, uh, you've seen uh, the monkey spinning metal video um, that was part of this project as well, so anyway, um, on to the tour. So here we got the feed magazine, the blanks for the parquet wood, you know, the little bats come get stacked up in here. You can make them however long you want up to, I think, about four feet. And then this pneumatic cylinder punches them into the feed system here. They get pulled in. Now, normally the slotting cutters would be right in here sticking up right here, but uh, they're off to be sharpened and balanced. They were in terrible shape. And here you can see, here's the lubrication line. This one's set right now for the for the narrow variant to where you only get lube on what looks like four holes. And then uh, there's a different, you just swap these around and then you get it for the full width. This groove bed technology, this machine is from uh, 1974. It's been around a while. When I was in college, Tom Gorman was talking about this. Uh, one of the, he's the head of the forest products department there at the College of Natural Resources. And I know the subject came up, so Tom, if you're watching this, um, groove bed technology has been around quite a while. I don't know if that was the the core of the topic, how long it's been around, but uh, anyway, as you can see from this uh, machine, 1974. So here we got all the way through, fully restored, and ready to rock and roll. I even got had to rebuild this motor down here, right here, and another motor up front. Put new bearings in it. This uh, tilts all kinds of different ways. And in case you guys haven't noticed, here's those collars I was uh, spinning in the mo in the monkey spinning metal video. Also rebuilt this uh, hold down shoe here. Uh, the V guides in it were pretty bad. Um, had to regrind the this uh, shoe square here. This uh, had been repaired at one time but wasn't squared properly. The shoe itself had some pretty bad wear in it so it had to be ground flat again. Let's see if we can get the camera in there to see that. Oh yeah. Um, it's got a ding in there where Somebody had put a cutter in one time, a, a narrow cutter down in here in this head here and cut into the shoe. But uh, these uh, V guides needed to be scraped. I, I don't have a scraper or, or the means to check them. Um, I did have to grind the gib up here. The gib was ground and polished so that way it was uh, somewhat smooth again then had to reassemble this whole thing it was 
had been beat on. Somebody had the idea that uh, since it didn't want to move, to help it along with a hammer. So here's what the uh, subbed looks like after the uh, bed plates were pulled off. So now the object is to go clean these up so that the mating surfaces here and so forth are free of crud. So here's the uh, base plate after cleanup. Um, notice the stains here on the in the cast iron still. Those won't quite come out, but this was uh, cleaned with brake cleaner and then scraped with a uh, spatula and then a wire bristle brush, a brass bristle brush, so that you're not actually etching the, the steel or the cast iron here. So uh, the, the reason that you got to get this stuff out of here is uh, these contaminants are hydrophilic, which means they attract water. And so when they attract the moisture, they can swell and then create distortions in both the base plate and the, the bed plate that you're bolting to it, so you don't want that. So you got to get as much of this crud off as you can. Now the staining, there's nothing that you can do about that. Like I said, I did take a, a spatula to it and scrape it so that there isn't anything but the crud uh, coming off. So now we're ready for our, our bed plates. Here we've got a receiver plate and the consequent bed plate. Uh, well, this is both are bed plates. The receiver plate would be in front of the cutter head on the machine. Um, this bed plate actually received most of its wear over here on this side of it. Um, for some reason this corner is, is a little low and you can see here as well uh, on this other part of the bed plate. Now over here there's a little bit of excessive wear right here. Um, so we're going to try and flatten this out a little bit better to get a nice smooth wood flow across the surface already occurred on this machine but when we're putting stuff on the mag chip it needs to be resurfaced uh, put the, the good side down uh, to get a nice um, mating surface uh, the, the both surfaces of, of the mag chuck and the and the work uh, made up nicely then you check over corner now this one here is fairly stable I had one that was uh, really bad and I was just moving because I was tipping on it, but if you have any tipping movement over corner, you need to flip the workpiece over and get that straightened out first before you can commence on getting your, uh, your running surfaces uh, trued up. So now that we've got that established, uh, turn on the mag chuck and uh, let it rip. This grinder has a uh, damaged arbor bearing and you can see the scalloped finish we're getting right here. Now these slots are uh, screws that hold down. This is a, a two-piece plate. There's a piece of stainless right here and then a piece of cast right here and this piece of stainless is just bolted down right here along this edge. You can barely see it. The camera's just kind of picking it up. But we got two different kinds of steel and so it's getting a little bit warm and uh, there's the danger of warpage so we're going to let it cool off here a little bit and then uh, in order to get a nice finish cut on here you can see there's still a little bit of skip right here but what the camera isn't picking up is that uh, the rust that is right here was up high enough to where the wheel was actually taking it off and here you can see that scallop finish even better and so we're going to like I say dress the wheel again and um, get a, a truer cut on this that'll it'll give us a, a fairly decent finish when we're done now the other thing I'd like to point out is if you have dissimilar metals metals on one workpiece um, try and take it the shortest way possible so if I were to uh, grind it this way um, granted the wheel would still be in the you know in one in one metal or another but you know of course then the uh, the uh, contact region here the wheel will be overlapping on both sides and then you get uh, uh, kind of a, um, I don't know what, what kind of an effect you would call it, 
but uh, anyway the wheel has a tendency to, to plug up a little more this way as it's going across the short way the transition is, is uh, just very abrupt and so you don't get the wheel clogging up uh, as it's going back and forth you know um, the face of the wheel that's actually in contact with the with the work so and then you you don't heat up as much either um, this is just barely warm right here so we're going to go ahead and dress the wheel and then continue on now here's a beautiful example of how uh, two different metals expand at different rates when they get warm when they're being worked now here you can see the cast it was raised up a little higher or it didn't expand as much as the piece of stainless did. Stainless does have a tendency to expand a little more than cast iron does. Now as this cast iron was getting worked it got hot so now that it's cool it shrank a little bit and so you can see right here's the uh, upper edge of the cut on the wheel from the, from the wheel on the cast iron and here it is on the stainless. Now it's all coming out to be on the same plane as it's going along because I'm taking a really light cut. The material is cool. Um, it's all the same temperature as you can see it's going through all on the same line on the cast but there is um, a noticeable difference in the way materials expand when they're being worked. Alrighty now we got everything all uh, to one standard thickness. There is a little bit of skip right here on the edge. Uh, it's important that you don't have uh, too much skip uh, on these bearing surfaces because as uh, the feed rolls put pressure on these plates um, they need to be uh, seated solidly all across uh, the bearing surfaces so that they don't one flex and then two in time break or with the flexing of the of the plate you'll get some deviation in the in the thickness of the wood so you got to eliminate that as much as you as possible so that's the reason we're going through and getting this all uh, one uniform thickness without with very little skip on, on any of the corners. Now, like I said, I've got a little bit right here on this guy here, about oh, a quarter of an inch, but that is beneath the guide, the side guide. So there's, no, there's not gonna be any pressure right here on this corner, same thing here. There's just a little bit, a smidge right here, but other than that, uh, the grinding wheel took off all the, the skip on these bearing surfaces. Now, the reason we, we uh, Grind the uh, the face of the of the plate first, is so that we establish a nice uniform surface, and then turn it over, and then uh, establish a nice uh, uniform thickness. And the reason for that, um, we're doing it on this side instead of the other side, is that uh, one, the heads of the bolts don't stick up out of the plate because you are taking uh, material off the top, and so uh, even though the bolts are recessed. Uh, depending on how much you had to take off, you may end up with a bolt's head sticking up out of the surface of the plate, so you got to try and avoid that. And the other thing is um, the heat that uh, is generated in the grinding process um, by taking, we're taking off very little material here. On the other side, we're taking off a whole lot of material uh, in terms of volume uh, on the overall surface, so that heats up. And then, of course, the warpage factor. Uh, enters into the picture there. We saw that with the uh, um, with the with the pickup edge here, uh, where the uh, stainless had shrunk considerably more than the uh, cast iron did. So um, we're trying to uh, you know avoid putting as much heat as we can into the uh, into the workpiece by using uh, by grinding on the smallest uh, available surface that we have. So. Now these are ready to put in and uh, we'll go ahead and go do that. So here we've applied our little shop square to get this uh, back into the plate square or the plate itself square to the machine somewhat and applied ample, <coughs> an ample coating of WD-40. Uh, WD-40 is a water displacement so any of these hydrophilic uh, contaminants that uh, were left on the in microscopic form that are left in the stain uh, on this plate will not be able to absorb any water from the from the air coming into it. Now also the uh, the lubricant used in the bed of this machine comes in through these little ports. Here's a one of the hoses hooked up to the smaller side 
and this was a wax suspended in a, in a water emulsion. And so there is quite a bit of a moisture that uh, will get in between these plates over here and so you got to minimize that contamination if you at all can. So that's why we're putting on copious amounts of WD-40 and, and not wiping it off but allowing it to, to maintain on there and then putting the plate onto that so that the WD-40 absorbs also into the bottom mating surface of the plate and uh, forces out any water. It also allows the uh, <clears throat> the plate to be located a little easier as it's being placed on the on the machine and creates a somewhat airtight seal between the the two plates and then that way nothing no air can get in there and cause problems. So here's our first plate all mounted in, and you got to watch to get the distance. Just right between the knives and the uh, and the top of the receiver plate here, it should be about the same on this side. We've got about three millimeters on both sides. It's hard. So here's our plates all installed finally. <clears throat> These square hood bolts. I put a lot of gronk on there. Uh, this is adjusted, of course, to this head. Now, if we wanted to, we could probably place. A piece of hardwood in between this gap here there should be something here but the wood you know this is such a short opening the wood will glide over this without any uh, problem yeah you can still see the skip right here on this uh, on this one piece but there's no this is outside the operating range of the machine anyway so it's really not that critical but the rest of the the plates are all ground and uh, all aligned Took a straight edge and see if to see if there was any. Um, you can feel a little bit of a of an edge here, but that's just due to the plates, um, just the nature of the beast. But it does go over there uh, quite nicely, so there shouldn't be any any problems with this whatsoever. So here's a rear table all reassembled, oiled down. That's the one we looked at before. The feed rolls are reinstalled, although they've been raised up quite a ways, rubberized. Anyway, there's that all complete. So now the machine's all back together except for the lubrication pump. Well, YouTubers, that's a wrap for today. I hope you enjoyed this little tour of the Weinig Molder. And uh, if you've got any thoughts or questions, by all means, put them in the comment section below. And we'll see you again soon.